Synth Spaces. G'day invaders and welcome to Synth Spaces. And this is a continued look at the Sega Mega Drive Ultimate Collection. And for regulars of the channel, you know that I've been looking at this series now for quite some time and I'm more than halfway through it. And guess what? We're up to Fantasy Star 2. And uh, this is the sequel to the very first roleplay game that I ever got to play. That was way back in the 80s. That was Fantasy Star, the very first one there. And that's my copy. Probably goes for quite a bit on eBay, but no one's getting that. That's uh, my system. And uh, yeah, there's the master system to go along with it. That's my, my little copy of that game. But uh, to rewind back to the 80s, one of the benefits of playing games since Spaces is that uh, I've got to see the birth and rise of many, many very, very famous uh, gaming franchises in uh, gaming culture. And Fantasy Star was one of them. I guess you could say I've seen it uh, born and then die, uh, unfortunately. Sega, if you're watching, I'd love a Fantasy Star 5, you know, when you're ready, when you're finished with doing your Yakuza's or whatever else you're finishing off there. <laughs> anyway, um, but one of the very big things that uh, came about with having a game like Fantasy Star was how are they going to follow it up with a sequel? And there was this really, really cool device called the Sega Mega Drive that was being announced and one of the very first games that I saw announced for it uh, was Fantasy Star, so Fantasy Star 2. And I figured, how are they going to follow up this really cool roleplay game with a 16-bit version? I was thinking at first how cool the dungeons were going to look. I was thinking, like, maybe we could see some speech. Maybe we could uh, see bigger dialogue. We got to see some of it. Uh, the, the dungeons didn't get improved on, unfortunately, which was a real grand shame because the dungeons in the Master System version were, you know, mind-blowing stuff for the time. We had never seen 3D dungeons in a roleplay game. And for my very first roleplay game to feature very, very complex uh, dungeon systems was just uh, extraordinary. If you didn't map those dungeons out, uh, you were in for a very hard time. So, uh, I got to see uh, Fantasy Star 2 at a mate's place. He managed to have his brother import it uh, from Japan, in, in Japanese though. And I got to see the Japanese version. Well, here, here's the, um, this is my copy of Fantasy Star 2. Originally it had a uh, hint book. I've, I've unfortunately, uh, Lost that hint book. Damn ex-girlfriends. They chuck stuff at you. You really don't want them to chuck. But I still got um, I still got the map, which I'll show you. So I'm being very gentle with this. Yeah, so I've still got the map and uh, the hint guide at the back with some handwritten tips in there from myself. And it's I've even sticky taped this to, to keep it together. Um, I hated the artwork. The artwork for this version was just putrid. They changed the two main characters from these young, fresh Japanese anime looking characters into these old, tired looking Western characters and I, I don't understand what the purpose of that was. Um, but anyway, rather than me babbling on much further, uh, this is Fantasy Star 2 for the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis depending on where you are watching this from. Take it away. All right. We have got Fantasy Star 2 fired up. Sorry, I just took a sip of um, whatever this is and uh, wow, I'm gonna call that a fire engine. Supposed to be fan of jelly, but I whacked a bit of bourbon in it. A bit too much, I think. We're just gonna roll with it. Wow. Um, anyway, let's, <laughs> let's get fired into this. So, Fantasy Star 2, oh my god, there's just so many good memories attached to this game, but the sad thing is, I still have not completed it. I really do need to get that sorted out. Um, we're going to erase the game, that's not helping my calls on. Yes. So, with Fantasy Star, we're going to call our character, what are we going to call our character? Uh, one of the bad things about this game was that 
your character is limited to four letters. So we're gonna go with Spud. Alright, Spud, let's begin. So I am haunted by nightmares every night. It's got a very solemn start to this game. A young girl's battling a giant demon. I'm, I'm, a demon. I'm close by, but I can't smooth or speak. All I can do is watch. I'm not doing this. This is all automatic. Or maybe I need to do this. Ah, oh, okay. All I can do is watch while the demon keeps striking at the girl. The girl, by the way, in case you haven't already figured it out, is the girl from the very first game, Alice. Who the hell is Alice? She, just as she's fighting for her life, I awake. I love the artwork. It's very, like they could have just gone for a very clean cut Japanese manga look, but they've gone for something a little different in this. I like it. I awake in my room, dimly lit by the eerie dawn. I am filled with an incredible sadness and fear. I am sp Spud, an agent here in Paseo, the capital of Mota. So that's the very same planet and city from the first game. I shake my head off as if to scatter the remnants of the dream. I have no time to worry like a child about nightmares in this modern age, especially with modern brain planning and controlling all aspects of the environment. I open the window, or my window, sorry, and take a deep breath of fresh air. It seems to wash away the bad feelings left behind by my dream. I know I'm adding words in there, sorry about that. All right, now I'm not controlling this. This is all automatic. Morning, Spud. Oh, oh my God, don't put so much bourbon in there next time. Um, how are you? Almost two years have passed since you first started working for me, the Commander of Mota. What am I going to ask you to do will be the toughest job you have ever done. But it is vital to the future of Mota. As you know, Alga has, brought up, has been brought up by Mother Brain. My work as a commander has been to smoothly promote the plans of Mother Brain. In other words, you're a puppet. I had believed that Mother Brain never makes mistakes. But those monsters are, over, are all over Mota are just too much. We must find out by ourselves why those monsters are born and how to bring them under control. Spud, your mission is to go to the Biosystems Lab and get the recorder. If we look into the data, we can figure out how the Biosystems Lab ended up making those monsters. Spud, I hope you take the bottom, oh sorry, I hope from the bottom of my heart that you come back safely with the recorder and we'll see each other again. Hmm. Pretty simple, go to point A, pick up item and uh, come back to part B. After going home and preparing for it a trip, knee seemed worried. Knee, I have to leave for a while. Knee stared at me for a moment. I remembered when we first met. She looked at me in just the same way. That was seven months ago. Well, only seven months, okay. So he only knew, knew, knew this kid for seven months. Uh, because she was the product of a mixture of human cells and those of a biomaster, she was an outcast from society. You were still small when we first met. But now you can take care of yourself. Wow, a lot can happen in seven months. I'm going on a dangerous journey. Too dangerous for you. I worry about you like you were my sister. Still, me stopped in the doorway to keep me from leaving. Please, Spud, take me with you. I'll do anything for you. That's a really bad voice for me, I know. See, one of the cool things with this game was, this was one of the very first, um, how would you put it? first exposures to Japanese manga style and seeing the character with blue hair, purple hair and big ears like this, it was cool. Um, and I just wanted more because it was just so cool looking. I took my sack and started to go, but Nii still blocked the way. I had no choice. I decided to let her come with me. 
And so, after all that, your game finally starts. So, what do you do when you first start your game? You, well, you talk to everyone, don't you? Do not get close to the bridge to the North River. Many people have been killed there by a man named Darren. If there's something you would like to know about Mota, you should go to the library at the Central Tower. Alright, well we're not going to mess around, we're just going to get out and explore. So, one very, very um, similar to Fantasy Star 1 is you had all these little huts, or kiosks, that sold stuff. Uh, and they came with really, really strange names, and there was nowhere to explain what they did. You had to figure it all out for yourself, which is why the uh, instruction manual was very handy back in the day. There was no on-screen explanation, there was no tutorials. You were just shoved into the game and, and had to figure it all out yourself. Um, which was kind of cool, but frustrating at the same time. So, Monomate and Diomate and, and all of this, these are, uh, these are products that help you regather health points. Telepipe is... Uh, well, it's a thing that allows you to escape dungeons and escape pipe. Uh, actually, no. Telepipe makes you escape back to your town. And escape pipe allows you to escape dungeons. That's right. But I've only got 200 mesetas, so I don't really have much of a chance uh, to buy any of that, really. So I'm just going to go out and explore. But I will need some weapons. Welcome to my shop. What can I do for you? Uh, well, this isn't weapons, sorry, this is armor. I should buy armor, but I just don't have enough money at this point in time. So, you know, this was the second roleplay game I think I can remember playing. And yes, the first one was Fantasy Star 1. And I was just addicted. And I never got, fan uh, I never got Final Fantasy. My first Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy 7. I probably would have been hooked on that if I had a, uh, been lucky enough to play that back in the day. So this is your save points. We don't need to worry about save points though because we've got the Xbox 360 to save. But back in the day, you had to save. It tells you how many points you need to get up a level which was pretty cool. And we can, oh, well I guess we can save, nothing's going to harm. So yeah, there's your save points. One of the first games I got to play with battery backup, which was cool. You got these teleport points, which allow you to transport between cities that you've already uh, discovered. You've got your hospitals here to recover health points. And when one of your members die, you can resuscitate them here at the, um, the clone labs. So you're not really resuscitating them, you're making clones of them. That's not really the same thing, is it? Oh wow, this is disgusting. <laughs> Alright, let oh wow. Let's get on with it. Alright, so this is your main world hub. I'm pretty safe here, there's not really much in the way of monsters and stuff here. But the minute I go in here, that could change, we'll see. Oh that's right, you don't see much monsters in here, it's the overworld. Right, we should see our first battle very shortly. And here we go. Now, the disappointing thing with this version compared to Fantasy Star 1 was these bland, checkered, Space Harrier 2-like backgrounds. That really sucked. But anyway, let's not dabble. Let's just get straight into this. Now, I am a very, in a very good chance of dying here very first go. This game is that brutal. All right, we got one down. So it's a turn by it's a turn based um, role play game. Uh, you got your health points down the bottom there, which I'm not doing too well to be honest.
She can't fight. She needs weapons. Oh my god. Can she get... No, she can't do anything except take hits. Oh, I'm not doing too good here. Alright, it's just me and this dude. Don't kill me. Yay! I survived my first fight. Now let's get the hell out of here. <gasps> I'm dead. I am so dead. I am so dead. Thank God. Let's get the hell out of here. I want to get to the first, at least to the first dungeon in this Let's Play to show you the difference between the Fantasy Star 1 maps, uh, dungeons that is, and the Fantasy Star 2 dungeons. Alright, let's give Nia a weapon. Uh, she takes uh, steel bars, that's right. Which one of you lugs is gonna hold it? I love that, um, that dialogue in the game when it first came out. Alright, knee. Anything else? Yeah, give her another one. Alright, so you bought your weapon. But you actually had to equip it. And back in, you know, when this came out, um, this was almost all foreign talk. Equip a weapon? What, you have to equip it? It's amazing how we take for granted that this is so simple now, but back then this was new. So yeah, you can put weapons in your left hand or in your right hand. You got your head, um, the ribbon as your defense, the body and also the legs and everything's all upgradable. And to me, this is a roleplay game. This is how a roleplay game should be and that's... Every time I play a roleplay game and it doesn't have those basic uh, aspects to the roleplay game, if, I, if they don't have that, I'm disappointed. Can we make it? No more fights. Yes. So, we have arrived at our very first township. I know the hideout. Those scoundrels is at the building in Shure. So, the dialogue was pretty limited back then. <laughs> Who's most frightening? What's most frightening is humans, not the monsters. Alright, so we got our dungeon. This is what I wanted this to show you. Alright, so... In uh, Fantasy Star 1, you had 3D dungeons like you would see in a first person shooter. Very basic, but it was very, very ahead of its time. But unfortunately, uh, you got these overhead dungeons instead in Fantasy Star 2. Not quite as impressive. In fact, nowhere near it. And these things, these dungeons were an absolute bitch because they, see, dead end. They were a maze, and I hated it. And they were hard. Look at this—you got four enemies in, and I'm, I'm not up to this. I'm gonna die. So eventually, you do get other party members, and you can decide who who to leave back at the base because you get more than two party members. Um, but when you first start out, you only got the two characters. It is rock hard. But eventually, as you grind away, and this is a big, big grinding game, um, you will find that you get yourself into a pattern of working up your levels on your on your uh, different characters and leveling up, and also getting really cool weapons. Okay, so Spud's finally got up a level, and also Knee's got up a level. Now I've just got to survive getting back to base. This is the problem. And Spud's dead. Bad Spud. And Nia's dead too. Wow. As you can see, it is a super, super hard <laughs> roleplay game. Yeah. But I have so many cool memories with this game. It's hard to show you guys in one Let's Play. I can only stress to you that you need to check this out for yourself. Um, I really had a lot of fun with this roleplay game when it first came out. And if it wasn't for Fantasy Star 1 and Fantasy Star 2, 
Uh, I would not have gone on to play all these other cool roleplay games. For example, I'm playing Xenoblade Chronicles 1, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Fantasy Star, Fallout 4, all these other cool, cool roleplay games. I would not have had any interest in any of those games if it wasn't for Fantasy Star. Heck, this was my... <laughs> I mean, you've got Pokemon. This was my Pokemon. Uh, it was way out before Pokemon even was heard of. So, yeah, hard to explain to you how important this game is to me. Um, but if you ever get a chance to play this and spend some serious time with it, I think you'll find that it is a very, very playable game roleplay game, especially number four, not so much number three. And speaking of Fantasy Star 3, Fantasy Star 3 is the next game to feature in this series. So please, please give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, also subscribe to the channel. Uh, I don't do, just do these let's plays, I do other various types of videos, but I do like to get stuck into the old classics like this every now and again for the channel. Uh, and also um, don't be afraid to uh, become a patron. I have a patron page set up for patreon.com forward slash since spaces and I've got myself another patron today so I'm really stoked about that and I've got myself now 724 is it yeah 724 subscribers so I'm slowly getting my way up to a thousand subscribers um, yeah so if you know someone that's into old retro games or new retro games um, send them my way I'd love to get another subscriber on board and eventually I will hope to get to that 1000 mark um, yeah anyway I think I'll move along my name's been Brian I've been gaming since spaces thanks guys Since Spaces.